the Bill and Scott Cubicle Show with Billy the Kid and Scott Tang. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. It's the Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Yeah. It's the Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Yeah. What's up? I'm Scott. I'm Bill. And this is the Bill and Scott Cubicle Show. Happy number 160. Four. Ooh, like the classic Nintendo 64. <laughs> Except with a one the Nintendo and edition. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All right. We are live and direct coming at you. We got a lot to get to. A boy band just received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Which one did this? We'll get into that in a second. This yodeling kid doing some more big things out there is Drake. Or actually, Drake is the greatest solo <laughs> artist. Not even a question. Of all You're time. You're just going to declare he's the greatest. He is the greatest, and I am not going to put any musical taste out there. I will only present some facts. Wait. You're telling me he's better than Taylor Swift? Facts. You're telling me he's better than Camila Cabello? There's facts. Because what I know is I talk into or out of Camila Cabello like at least once an hour. So, and that means that means greatness to me. It is greatness. They are great artists, but they are not the greatest. <laughs> I'm just, I'm trolling. I'm just trolling. Stop Obviously, it. it's Drake. Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> and the world is a cube. It's been discovered. We figured it out. We are going to keep you so woke in a little bit. No, the world's not round. No, the world's not flat. No, actually, it's both. It's both. And we'll tell you how in just a little bit. But let's get us started with Kanye West. The latest on Kanye here. All right. The other day we were talking about Kanye was going to use the surgeon that performed the last uh, surgery on his mother before she passed as his album cover. Well, he wrote an open letter to Kanye yesterday being like, yo, bro, you better not use my uh, my likeness to promote your stuff. Basically, this guy's name is Jan Adams. He was a little bit more polite about it than that. He kind of was like, you know, I appreciate the gesture of goodwill and good faith that you mean by wanting to use this, but I would rather you not because I don't want people associating me with her death. And then he kind of went on a long and very detailed account of why Donda West, Kanye's mother, why her death was not his fault. Um, and he, he kind of, in the rundown, he was basically like the coroner didn't report it correctly. TMZ kind of got wind of it and was basically like, oh, this guy operated on her. It must yeah. have been his fault and just kind of ran with it. And you know how information spreads Especially when it once comes it hits to TMZ. Harvey. Yeah. So and uh, I guess he he provided an example of something verifiable that the lawyer, he, that Kanye's lawyers backed down on because they knew it was they knew he was right. Um, the letter was it's long, so I'm not gonna read the whole thing from here. But um, <clears throat> my the the <clears throat> takeaway of this for me is not even you know the letter itself or the what happened concerning her death because you know I wasn't there. I don't know. It's, it's he said, she said, honestly, this guy can write all the letters he wants and claim to have all the facts. But what matters to me here is how Kanye responded to it. He uh, took an image of the letter and he tweeted it out with the caption, open letter from Jan Adams. This is amazing. Thank you so much for this connection, brother. I can't wait to sit with you and start healing. So that's big. That's positive. Like if you get, if I, his, his whole thing was that, you know, he's hated this guy for so long and he wants to stop hating him. And if I got a letter from this guy like that after i had been like let's let's open up lines of forgiveness he was like well actually it's not even my fault you got it all wrong i'd probably like knee jerk reaction be like well geez what a jerk right like here i am trying to be nice to this guy and he's just like and eh, ain't, ain't even my fault so for kanye to be like that it just it, it impresses me also just think about we are because of kanye's mother's passing we are dealing with it still to this day like Kanye like definitely affects this like the the culture and things going on. He he's like a Trump and he can guide the conversation and he can make the news cycle just revolve around him. True story. Right? And everything all and everybody wants to point back to when Kanye's mom died. So maybe him sitting down and actually healing, maybe this will be good and maybe it'd be good for good for everybody because we all kind of have to deal with it I seem like because he just puts it out there. And everybody just gets so invested in, it, you know, their panties in a bunch that they, that they, they get going. And it's, it's everybody. Like it's, it's not just people in entertainment news world. Like 
political pundits are hopping on Kanye because he's involving Trump in all this stuff. It is. It's fascinating the amount of influence he has over the media at large. And my biggest takeaway from this is that the guy goes on to say, hey, listen, that the caretaker that was supposed to be taking care of your mom afterwards, that's the reason why she died. He wasn't there when it happened. There was all these things that was supposed to be done that were never done. And and if I read between the lines in this letter, I get that this guy is saying, yo, Kanye, if you want to put the killer of your mother on your album cover, you should put your cousin. Ooh. That was my big takeaway from it. Like, yo, no, it's not my fault. Your cousin's fault. Blame your cousin. Stop coming at me. I don't and think he'll put his cousin on the album cover. Either do I. He's not trying to put somebody on blast. I think he's, we might get a big heart. For love, everybody. Yep, because love he's everyone. trying to spread love. Love, everyone. Uh, cube around the world. Oh, he's trying to put a love case yes. on the cube of the world. And before we get into why Drake is the greatest artist of all time in this in this world, we have to tell you that the world is indeed a cube. We figured it out. So here's the way it works, right? You know, you got the round earth people, the flat earth people. Well, what if the earth is both flat and three-dimensional? Right. Right? So the reason why you can see, like, you get the horizon, you can't see past the horizon, is because, like the flat earthers say, it does drop off on the other side. But, but. if you started walking... Here and walked in a straight line, you would eventually come back to where you started because the earth is a box. Right. It's a cube. So it's fully shaped but also flat on six sides. And when you look at it from a distance, you're like, oh, why is it kind of round there? That's because it's spinning so quick that it just gives you the illusion that it's round. Wow. I can't believe – we just solved it. We solved life's Here we mystery. Are. We were unifying two opposing groups of people, bringing them together to one. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you mean, What's Sean? Your What's your oh, Sean? What do you think the world is round? We are all dumber for having listened to it. Oh, wow! Wow! Look at this guy. But see, you know what? As an advocate of free speech. You are allowed to have your yes. bad opinion, Sean. If you want to think that the world is round, go ahead. Right. Think that the world is round. Just be. <laughs> I think he's jealous. I think he's jealous that we solved we this before the code. anyone else. No, 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 no. You don't want to say that because you're not operating with love. He's not jealous. Well, I mean, I could be operating with love and still say I think he's just jealous, but I forgive him and I love you him. You forgive him. Yeah, I forgive you. I forgive you, Sean. Sean, he forgives you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Extending open arms yeah. to the B Cube. There he is, Sean McMaster. There he goes. <laughs> and there's Chad right there. Um, Drake, right? Is Drake the greatest artist, solo artist of all time? You already said he was, but now you got to tell us why. That's the all second right. oh. thing I've ever heard. Oh, <laughs> damn, guys. He's slamming him down today. But I am going to prove why he is, though, right. right here. Prove it. Hit with me with some, the facts. Some new facts. All right? Not alternative facts. New facts. Facts that are within the past year that will hold valid to this point because nobody else has done this. Drake's song, God's Plan, was number one for 11 weeks in a row. Mm -hmm. He replaced that song with Nice For What at number one, which has now been number one for three weeks in a row. How many weeks? Woke weeks. (laughs) And... If you take that, you got 14 consecutive weeks at Drake at the number one spot. Three and a half months. Almost four months Drake has been in the number one spot for. No other artist has been number one that long. Well, that's it. Open and shut. He's the greatest. There it is. Greatest of all time. That's my facts to prove it. I can't argue with those facts. Now, you, you show me other facts. I don't have any. That I don't have show any somebody else facts. at number one longer than that on there the aren't. charts. It hasn't happened. Listen, Michael Jackson and uh, I think there, there's like another artist out there. They've spent more time at the number one spot on the charts. More total time. But not consecutively. Not all in a row. Which makes Drake <clears throat> the greatest artist of all time for at least this time. That's truly a Canadian at the forefront of the American a. mind. So, what do you think about that? I think not much. Okay. Apparently. <laughs> do you want to move on to another moment in time? Well, how how are we going to get there? 
How do we get there? A wrinkle in time. You go through the wrinkles, man. <laughs> Let's wrinkle our way forth through time. So what, what are we moving on until now? To, to yeah. one of the glorious things that has happened to the universe over the past okay. few days. Yep, sure. Right? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Wrong picture. I'm sorry. No, the internet plays way too much. How do you combine the yodeling kid with Takashi 6 9 uh, Oh, man. Is this, are we looking at uh, Mason Ramsey? This is his kid's name. That's his name? Oh, yep. It's not yodeling kid? No, okay. but I mean, he is yodeling kid. He's best known as yodeling kid. Is this, is it, are we looking into the future? Is this another wrinkle in time? Wow. Is that what we've got? A glimpse through the looking glass? It, will this be? God's plan. It all could be a part of God's, God's plan. plan. Face tattoos and rainbow-colored hair. Wow. But, yo, Yodeling Kid came out with a banger, man. It's called Famous. Wow. <laughs> came out on Friday. Can't even lie. As of yesterday, the official stream numbers, people tend to agree, has 2.13 million streams on Spotify, so it makes him the most streamed country song in the world. <laughs> Plus, he's number one on iTunes in the United States and the UK for country music. Mm. This 11-year-old kid who was discovered yodeling at Walmart. Now, here's the thing about that. I have always been, I've wondered, what is so special about Yodel Kid? Because I can like, am I doing it wrong? No, you're fine. I, I feel like that's that's what he does. But is it just because he's 11 years old? Yeah, that that makes it adorable. And when yep. I do it, it's creepy because he's an adorable young lad, letting his heart out in Walmart. He's just a yeah, 11 year old country boy. And if he wants to be known for one thing, that is loving you. I even know the lyrics. That he wants to be. Is he wants to be famous for loving you? Is yeah. that yeah? Yo, John, you gonna be playing yodeling, kid? On the cat, not yet. Is it yet? <laughs> I can't wait for him to hit the airwaves like that. We'll keep you updated. Don't you worry. Damn, I'm invested into this yodeling kid for some reason. In sync. They got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's all five of the InSync boys reunited to get their Hollywood Walk of Fame star yesterday. And why is this important? Purely because of the significance. Well, I mean, I guess the significance of the Hollywood Walk of Fame star, but the significance of the date. What was yesterday? Uh, it was the last day of April. The last day of April, April 30th, which means that the next day, the classic, iconic line you want me to hit it? Yeah, because I don't know when you want right. to do stuff. Oh, okay. I was just going to say, the classic, it's a reference to the iconic line. Guess <laughs> what? <laughs> Remember that? May is tomorrow. Damn, that was the best part of the song. Yeah. And it's just Guess repeating now. It might be just repeating over and over because going? it's just uh, like a two-second loop. So, Ooh, yeah, it looks like right. it was just repeating itself <laughs> over and over there. I can't hear it back here. That's now, they got a walk of fame. Room. Now, if they're together, could we possibly see an Excuse NSYNC me. hit the road type thing? Boom. They've or been do on... they join JT on tour on The Man of the Woods? They've been on The hiatus. Boys of the Woods? <laughs> the Man of the Woods with the Boys of the Woods? The tr can we call them the Tree Boys? Oh, with the Tree Boys? <laughs> with the Tree Fort Club Fort? Yeah. They've been on a hiatus since 2002, and although Lance Bass confirmed in an interview that they were broken up, there's never been an official statement, never been like a press release or anything to say we're broken up. So I think it's you know, time. Shout out to the person that just hit off a whole bunch of laughing faces. I don't know what we said, like, back. It might have been that it's going to be May. Shout out to you. Or oh, okay. May is tomorrow. Mm, facts. Anyway, so what about the boys of the woods? Well, I don't know. I feel like. I feel like Justin Timberlake's Super Bowl performance was a huge missed opportunity to bring about the Tree Boys. <laughs> the Tree Boys. And uh, so I don't think we'll see it, frankly. If, if I'm being intellectually honest, I feel like Justin Timberlake just wants to hog the spotlight. Yeah, of course he does. That's all he wants. Because with all those trees in the way, how can you let your yeah. light shine? And why would you leave the group so successful to be solo? To be even more successful. Who does that? Camila Cabello? Ooh. She incidentally, just to get off on a little rabbit trail here, she said... That she does not regret leaving Fifth Harmony. I don't blame her. I can't imagine why. She's perfectly successful on her own, and the group is now broken up. So. Actually, she's more successful, I think, than the yeah. group ever was. Oh, yeah. She, she's had a number one. They never did. No, Naomi's coming for you, though. That's true. Um, 
And Lauren just Normani. said she's about to. Uh, yeah, Normani. And uh, that Lauren chick Lauren said she's about to put out some new music. Hereggy. I like to. I like the way you say her last name because you do not say it the way it looks. No, oh, how do you say it? Hereggy. Hereggy. Yeah. How does it look? It looks like Juareggy. Oh. All right. So you ready for some bad jokes? Yes. Ah, uh, please. Okay. So last week I had some good ones. Bless this me week, with your once jokes. Again, uh, the, listen, Bless me with your jokes. I'm like working the Pope on something about else weapons. that I'm, I'm not going to talk about on the cubicle show. I'll talk about it after it happens. But uh, I'm working on something else. And I'm trying to keep all my my uh, my material for that. Is this going to be a nice little speech? Excuse so, me. So most of my good materials in that for right now. Okay. And you know what I'm talking about. Oh, I know about. what you're talking about. It just well, today's a slow day for me. You got to forgive me. Like you got you particularly got to forgive me for that Hollywood Walk of Fame thing that we no, did. That was really ridiculous. That's fine. I, that wasn't like it was planned or anything. No, it wasn't. That was impromptu. But that's the kind of energy we have here. Just roll with it. Okay. All right, Scott's bad jokes. There I have go. not yet seen these jokes, so I'm looking forward to having my socks knocked off <laughs> or put on. Black China is allegedly pregnant with her 18 year old rapper boyfriend YBN Almighty J's baby. <laughs> that's so many words. <laughs> I try, China, to, I, I try to marginalize it. <laughs> China, 29, has a child from a past relationship with Tyga and just gave birth to daughter Dream with Rob Kardashian in November 2016. Now this explains why when you look up thought in the dictionary, there's a picture of black China's oh, face. Oh, oh, oh. She is becoming <laughs> the thought of the century. I think the best, oh, uh, best description of her I ever heard was from this guy on Twitter who made a video of her describing her as a ran-through stripper. Ooh, she is a friend. She's like a drive through stripper. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Microwave <Drive-thru>. stripper. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, Kyle, uh, go and try some stand-up comedy. I've. It's in the works. You, you should hear some of the jokes from Scott's stand-up routine. They are real nice. Yeah, it, it's in the works. It will happen. I wanted to do the, the stand-up last year, but I never got around to it. But maybe this year. Because I'm tired of people. Being marginalized? Yeah. Here we go. Here's a new theory on why you might get along with your coworkers. Coffee goggles. A new study found that when you drink coffee, it makes you feel more positively about the people you're talking with. If that's the case, then why are our coworkers trying to marginalize the cubicle show till we're out of our moment? <laughs> Yo, they need more coffee. Oh, man. We just need to caffeinate this office. Oh, it's so marginalized. Okay. Do you see Pete Kelly walking by in the background? Yeah. By the way, he's oh yeah, he's, he's no longer morning back guy. there. Yeah, he's not on our. That this is now the um the soda holding. He desk. decided doing mornings was a better move for his career. Yeah, look at that, that <laughs> empty, an empty chair wow. and an empty table. Freaking lay Miz over here. Yeah, lay Miz. Okay, this guy. Wow. <sighs> All right, another. You got four bad jokes this week. I got four. Dude, okay. Relax edition. Number three. Good news for Meek Mill. He just got approved to travel outside his home in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, for work. And Meek, this should go without saying, but work doesn't mean popping wheelies. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what got him the, you know, uh, parole violation, or was it a probation violation? Yeah. Parole? Something like that. It got him in trouble. Okay, and here's uh, back to jail. Here we go, the final. The, the final. The, the reach. The stars. reach of the reach. When you reveal a secret, you've spilled the beans. I really, I like the way the launching point for this already. Which is the nice way of saying, you gossiping little snitch. <laughs> Where did that come from? I don't know. You just thought of it. Yeah, somebody <laughs> said spill the beans, and I was like, "Oh, you got something, little snitch." But if you Woo. could, you could replace snitch with a word that starts with a B, and it sounds more harsh. Baseball. But that was cubicle friendly. Yeah, that's true. So you see that? Still keeping it for the friendly. Okay, that's it. Dang. Wow, we ran through this episode today. We sure did. It's probably because my brain is not operating at maximum capacity. Mm. Mm, I need a nap real bad. Real you, bad. If you feel, my feeling this level has been at a constant like 7.5 for the whole episode. If you notice, nobody yelled at me to shut up today. That's a good one. I have not been so on So let's one. end it before we get yelled before at. we get on one. And All then right. we can maybe get some clout tokens to use for mm. a further date. Mm. Sound good? Yep. Woke. Forever. Okay, so you can catch the Cubicle Show on the Jams Facebook page Monday through Thursday at 10.30 Eastern Time. I guess that's the only time zone that matters. One. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show! That's what I'm talking about, boy! You know what I'm saying?
got cubicle show. Yeah. Bill and Scott cubicle show. Yeah. Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott cubicle show. It's the Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott cubicle show. It's the Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott cubicle show. It's the Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott cubicle show. Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Not a rectangle show. Not a triangle show. Not a pyramid show. It's a cubicle show. Bill and Scott cubicle show. Yeah. Bill and Scott cubicle show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just got one boy.